By now you've probably heard that Japan has a little bit of a thing for animal cafes, and you've probably heard of cat cafes for sure, but we had to make a stop at a slightly different one, a capybara cafe. This is so cool. He's like, he's like doing like the head nods here, just, just to show off. <laughs> Their names are Pitsuke and Kohaku, and they are adorable. And one thing that I was pleasantly surprised about was that the coffee was actually really good. In the US, I've gone to cat cafes before, and usually the coffees leave something to be desired, but here, top tier. Oh, there you go. Hi. Oh my god, it's great. giant rodents out of the way, it was our turn to be fed, and we didn't go far. We went over to a window park to go see the cherry blossoms, and turns out there was a little street festival there. A lot of these happen in the spring in Japan. I can confidently say that we almost hit every single stand there, just trying a little something and sharing, and all that food was delicious. And we only got slightly distracted at one point. Do you want one? Damn, yeah, they're huge. They're glaring at me right now. They're like, where's our food? We're posing for you. Do you know how expensive koi fish are? No, how much? They're like, oh. like ridiculous. Like, I, you really? want one? I inherited one on one of my properties <laughs> and I'm serious? trying to keep it alive. You can have it They're if you so want. Expensive. Sometimes you have to get up high to better appreciate the scale of a city. And like the photography nerd I am, I had us go at night too. Dude, this is so cool. Take a look at this. What's going on there? I don't know. I was wondering what this was. It's a little light show? Yeah. I like it. I'll go back to the, the, the selfie cam. Yeah. <laughs> Choking myself to death. Dude, what the fuck? It's so cool up here. Oh my god. I'm oh, gonna make sure I don't fall. I'm so happy. This is incredible. Like, just look at this view. Alright, so had some time before uh, we got to meet up with the rest of the group, and I didn't really feel like just sitting in my hotel room, so I'm gonna go out and explore a little bit. Don't know where I'm going. I am so happy that we finally caught all the cherry blossoms and it bloomed at the right time. Like, it's kind of incredible to me that like we're in like a major part of Tokyo. Not that far from Haneda, not that far from like, a major train station, and it is peaceful and quiet. There are birds chirping. Like, not a chance in hell would you get this in New York. Like, this is like mind blowing to me. One thing that you're not gonna be lacking in Japan and specifically even Tokyo are shrines and temples. You have the famous ones like Meiji and Sensoji and just, it's gorgeous. You should definitely see them. I love them. And just be prepared for the sea of people because there are so many tourists. I mean, myself included. Okay, so here's your super quick overview of why Meiji and Sansoji are like two significant religious landmarks and cultural landmarks in Japan. So starting off with Meiji Shrine, it is dedicated to Emperor Meiji and Empress Shokin, two pivotal figures in Japan's modernization during the late 19th and early 20th centuries. You might have heard of the Meiji Restoration. That's him. So Emperor Meiji helped bring Japan out of like this feudal warring state and into a more unified state and basically six years after he died, they built a shrine to commemorate him. 
then on the other hand you have Sensoji Temple, also known as Asakusa Canon Temple. It is Tokyo's oldest and most visited temple. It's dedicated to Canon, the Buddhist goddess of mercy. And it attracts a lot of like, pilgrims, that are Buddhists, and other just tourists like myself, and probably you. You've probably seen the famous gate at the start of Sensoji, and also the Nakamise shopping street, which is always packed. And yeah, that's pretty much it. That's your brief overview of why these two are very important landmarks. Oh my god. I guess I guess this. Oh shit. <coughs> you Eevee? Yeah. Oh my god. Oh, there's one more bug. Something we just we couldn't go. pass up the opportunity to do was do Mario Karting yeah. through the streets of Tokyo. We're gonna press the gas, it goes all out. Like that. Dan's gonna ram. <laughs> Damn it, Katie. You're ruining it. After racing through the Tokyo streets, we decided to take a little step back and slow down a bit. And we decided to take a little day trip out to a seaside town called Kamakura. Um, it's really not that bad to get to, and of course we didn't have great weather, but gorgeous nonetheless, and I absolutely loved it. It's more like one of my sleeper picks. Oh, don't get my pants wet. Uh, we could have gotten a little better weather, but it is gorgeous. Like, oh, I freaking love the ocean. No, it's nice. I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, no, <laughs> <laughs> okay. We're out here teaching photography. We're doing it. <laughs> I don't think it's a surfer. What are you talking about? Thing up there? Uh, I think to stop rock slides, maybe? Oh. I'm not totally sure. <laughs> Run, Gaten! <laughs> Get him! Oh <laughs> Get him! <laughs> oh my god. After the seaside, we made our way over to the Enoshima line, which is this really old, classic electric train. It's just so happy about this. I'm a fucking nerd, so I loved it. Uh, but there's a few other attractions that you might want to see in Kamakura, like the giant Daibutsu, which is one of the ones you'll see at like Nara as well, at Tadaiji Temple. Uh, we made our way over to Hasidara Temple. Uh, this is just absolutely gorgeous, and to be honest, it might have upstaged the seaside for me. We'll see. Over here? Yes. We 
go see some other things too, but turns out everything closed at 5 and that kind of screwed us over. But, you know, lesson learned. Now back in Tokyo, we had to prepare for our night out the right way with the fried meat. So we ended up going over to Amoida Yokocho, which is this like really cool street, or actually two, where it's a bunch of tiny little restaurants and some bars too, and yeah. Fried meat there, fantastic. Can never go wrong. Golden Guy is this crazy little area where it's a bunch of tiny little bars all crammed together. Like you can't fit more than maybe like 10 people in there max. And that's where we met Kyoko, our new favorite bartender in Tokyo. And yeah, wild night, a lot of fun. I don't really remember much, but that's how we ended this leg of the journey in Tokyo. Yep.